Hi, I'm Raz. I'm a lecturer in statistics at the University of Canterbury's Department of Mathematics and Statistics in Christchurch, New Zealand. I will be your lecturer for Statistics 221 or Monte Carlo Methods and Statistics. You can contact me by uh, emailing me for an appointment and you can get my current email address by simply looking here and uh, and this should reveal my email address and my math address uh, is working fine so this is my usual address it's r dot s a i n u d i i n at math.canterbury.ac.nz now this is my um, home page and our main um, course page is going to be in the department we go to courses and in the course we go to statistics 200 level and stat 221 which is Monte Carlo methods if you hit this actual STAT 221 course page, then it'll take you to the actual course page. This is going to be our basic uh, course page where all the information will be uploaded. You should have already watched a first video, and this video would have taught you how to create your own Sage Notebook account. Okay, So there is a YouTube link 0, 0.0 here. Uh, please watch that to learn how to sign in so you can watch that here alright I'll let you guys watch that later so I'll assume that you've already watched that video um, and that will tell you how to um, get your own account possibility is to go to the Sage Notebook server and log in as yourself. I'm going to log in as as um, this person that I logged in as earlier to show you how to get an account. Now, once you sign in, you have your um, you're signed into your Sage account. You can go to the published um, and find the Stat Two Two One Week O One material, which is down here. And if you hit that, you will get this um, pub56 um, up in the URL. Now, if you hit edit a copy, then you will be able to edit a copy of that worksheet. So that's what you want to be sitting at before our first lecture. So it'll take some time. There are various videos embedded here, so we have to make sure that we are online and we're able to contact various servers like Show Me Do and YouTube and so on to get to this point. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the video from now and we will start from this point on without video but beware that I am behind you um, and we will just focus on the lectures with voice and the screen shots. Okay. This is STAT 221 week 1. You should have already grabbed this worksheet from the published worksheets and we will continue with the material. Introduction, numbers, strings, booleans and sets. So this is a course about computational statistical experiments with Monte Carlo methods. The official description says that this course is about the generation of random numbers and their uses, including computer simulations to mimic and contrast random real-world phenomena. It will provide an intuitive and practical understanding of the basic methods in computational statistics and show how to implement statistical algorithms to manipulate, visualize, and comprehend various aspects of real-world data. So who does computational statistical experiments? Formally, a statistical experimenter is a person who conducts a statistical experiment. Roughly, an experiment is an action with an empirically observable outcome or data 
that cannot necessarily be predicted with certainty. So this is in the sense that a repetition of the experiment may result in a different outcome. An experimenter attempts to learn about a phenomena through the outcome of an experiment. Okay, so most scientists and engineers and decision makers, including administrators, are experimenters. A simple experiment example of an experiment is the quint chunks. So this is a cute little experiment. This was uh, originally designed by Sir Francis Galton, an English statistician from the late 1800s. And here is the physical model of the squint chunks. What it is is just a bunch of nails stuck squarely on a wooden board, and the nails are stuck um, on this like this pattern. So when the ball hits on the first nail, it goes to the left or to the right, and it goes to the left, it hits another nail, and it goes to the left again or right again, and so on and so forth. And eventually, when you drop a ball, it's going to take a particular path through this array of nails and drop into one of these buckets and it'll be very difficult to predict exactly which path the ball is going to take and which bucket it's going to land up, end up in. And this is demonstrated here. Several balls were dropped and you see that um, different balls have gathered in different buckets and it seems like there's quite a few balls in the middle bucket, for instance. Anyway, that's a very concrete example of an experiment. Let's go back. Another experiment that's very close to home is a lottery. So just like New Zealand Lotto, there is now British National Lottery and this site, uncertain, understandinguncertainty.org, is extremely nice. It has some very nice animations. So let's make this a little bigger and let's watch this animation. So here we have numbers from 1 through 49. That's the first draw on week 1. Six numbers are drawn. That's the draw from week three and week four and so on. And what you're seeing here uh, is a frequency histogram of all the draws for the first eight weeks and now for the first nine weeks and so on. Now we can fast forward this to get an idea of the draws. So there's 1,240 draws in this example and we can keep going until all of them um, work out. But can also stop at any time you want and play around. So the lotto and the lottery is a very nice example of an experiment where it's very difficult to predict the outcome. Of course, other interesting experiments close to home may include earthquakes in New Zealand, like the big one that uh, is enforcing us to make videos of the lectures, for example, or how the diameter of various seashells are distributed along the New Brighton Beach on either side of the pier, for example, and many more other experiments that physicists, uh, including astrophysicists and chemists, including structural chemists and administrators and business managers and so on and so forth do. In this course, the main emphasis is using the computer hand in hand with an experiment. Recent technological advances are facilitating computationally intensive statistical experiments based on possibly massive amounts of data. This type of massive amounts of observation was not really viable a decade ago. So now every field has so much data in it, therefore to be a successful decision maker, scientist or engineer in most specializations today, you have to be a very good computational statistical experimenter. A computational statistical experimenter has to tell a machine what to do with the data, that is, program the machine. In addition, statistical experimenters use a mathematically formal way of thinking about their experiments. They use set theory, probability theory, and other branches of pure and applied mathematics through established statistical theory to reach their administrative, scientific, and engineering decisions from their data. This course is designed to help you take the first steps along this path. On the computational side, we are going to be using Sage. This is uh, the Sage server, notebook server you're already logged on and looking at this material from. Now, we'll be using Sage because it is a free open source mathematics 
software system that's licensed, licensed under the GNU public license. It can be used to study mathematics and statistics, including algebra, calculus, elementary to very advanced number theory, cryptography, commutative algebra, group theory, combinatorics, graph theory, exact linear algebra optimization, interactive data visualization, randomization, or Monte Carlo algorithms, scientific and statistical computing, and much, much more. Therefore, it'll help you integrate all the knowledge you're getting from other courses into one place. It combines various software packages into an integrative learning, teaching, and research experience that is well suited for novices as well as professional researchers. Sage is nothing but a set of software libraries built on top of Python, which is a widely used general purpose programming language. Sage simply enhances Python's already mathematically friendly nature. It is one of the languages used at Google, NASA, JPL, Industrial Light and Magic, YouTube, and other leading entities in industry and public sectors. Okay, you can follow these links and read a lot more about it if you want, but we are not going to spend a whole lot of time chasing each link. This is what you're supposed to do on your own time. Now, you can take a nice feature tour if you're uh, impatient on what you can do with Sage and... I will simply hit that link and throw it out there so you can see with some very beautiful animations and uh, so on and so forth. Let's not get distracted here in our lecture and go back to our material. Now, let's just hear what um, the chief economist at Google thinks about statistics and computational statistics. This uh, issue of the uh, availability of data is I was giving some uh, uh, career advice to students uh, a few months ago, and I said, look, the critical thing to do is to be complementary, have a scarce talent or a scarce resource that's complementary to something that's ubiquitous and cheap. So this is like if left shoes are really cheap and you have a monopoly on right shoes, you're in a really good position. And uh, the example uh, here is what's getting ubiquitous and cheap? data. What's scarce and expensive? The talent to be able to analyze that data and make it tell its story. So it's the analytic capability, which I think does involve computers, but ultimately involves the uh, individual's uh, understanding and uh, talent and capability that is the dream job of the next decade. So I've been telling people that the really sexy job in uh, the 2010s is to be a statistician because they're the people that can make the data tell its story. And everybody has data. And the problem is how do you utilize that data more effectively? Because now we have these systems that collect everything. And uh, the bottleneck is analyzing it. There just aren't enough people to do it. And we've got a team, we've got at least 100 statisticians at Google. And we've been building up. And they're at every aspect of our data, both on the search side and on the business side. It's a very critical role to play. OK, so the dream job of the next decade is that of a computational statistical experimenter. If you have some time, I'm not going to do it in this video. I'll just start it. Please watch Scientific My Computing name is Using Hussain Sage. Pinto, and today I'm going to discuss scientific computing this using is an the video. Sage uh, open source computing environment. Now, the easiest way to think of Sage is as a coherent consolidation of over 64 of the best uh, open source scientific packages under a command line and a browser interface. Now, another very, very important resource to be a resource to be aware of is the Khan Academy. You can watch these videos later. I'll embed some of the tutorials from Khan Academy to jog your memory, but I'm not going to play these videos at this point in time. 